we are, uh, hopefully you're watching this because you've survived lesson 24, congratulations. And now we are just coasting into lesson 25. I think you guys will find lesson 25 to be rather refreshing um, because we're taking the strategies that we've been working on in lesson 24 um, and then we're just adding estimation. And estimation is our jam because estimation, um, we don't need a precise answer and estimation is very personal. So we're going to get into lesson 25. We're going to look at some uh, examples right now and we're just going to manipulate the numbers so that they work for us, remember? And, um, and then just do some mental division. So you can handle it. Let's do this. It's going to be awesome. Here we go. Without further ado, we are going to um, handle 25 like a bunch of bosses. Okay, so lesson 25. Um, we Is tomorrow Friday? Wow, tomorrow's Friday. We are <clears throat> just going to push through this. I know a lot of us are still working on decomposing the numbers. Um, that's wonderful because within lesson 25 we're going to have an opportunity to continue that practice. So here we see the magical word estimate. Oh, I love that word. Estimate the quotient. So you guys know this very fancy word quotient is the answer to a division problem. So here we go. We're going to be doing some rounding. I know that everyone rounds differently. I'm going to show you how I choose to round these numbers. But again, please keep in mind that you want to be rounding these numbers to a place that makes sense to you. Okay, so 3.24 divided by 82. Um, let's go ahead and round 3.24 to 3.2. Or 32 tenths. Okay. We're going to divide 32 tenths. I'm going to round 82 to 80. I think a few of you probably already saw that coming. Um, okay, so if we have 32 tenths and we're going to round those 32 tenths into 80 equal groups, how many tenths are we going to have in each group? Well, um, that's a little tricky, so let's go ahead and use the strategies that we learned in Lesson 24, and let's decompose 80 so that we can really just tackle this mentally. Let's decompose 80 into 10 divided by 8, and let's take another look at this. So now we have 32 tenths divided by 10. Again, this is that awesome work that we did in Lesson 24, divided by 8. 32 tenths is equal to 3.2. I'm just going to rewrite this now in standard form. 3.2 divided by 10 divided by 8. Okay. So let's do this first. What is 3.2 divided by 10? 3.2 is going to shift one place value to the right because there's one zero in 10. When we shift 3.2, one place value to the right, Louis, what number do we end up with? Thank you, sir. 0.32 or 32 hundredths. Now we need to divide 32 hundredths into eight equal groups. Do you guys see how this decomposition actually really helps us? We have 32 hundredths. We want to divide them into eight equal groups. How many hundredths are in each group, Ava Lemon? Four hundredths, indeed. Thank you, thank you very much. I This was a lot of work, so I'm going to go ahead and clear that. So we have, wow, that was, that was pretty impressive. So that we have a... Uh, Clean workspace. Okay, so let's take a look at B. 361.2 divided by 61. I'm going to go ahead and round, as many of you I think would, I'm going to round 361.2 down to 300, uh, 360. And then I'm going to round 61 to 60. Okay, so we have 360 divided by 60. Let's decompose 60 so that we can really uh, divide this very quickly in our heads. We have 360. I'm going to rewrite the expression. We're going to decompose. You know what? I don't want to do that. Oh, I cleared the whole thing. Um, let me write it over here. 
goodness sakes, we just do not have enough workroom in our problem sets. Okay, so let's go ahead and decompose 60 into 10 divided by 6. And let's rewrite our, our entire expression here as 360 divided by 10 divided by 6. I think most of you are becoming much, much more comfortable with this because we've really been working hard on this. 360 divided by 10. Evan, do you have an answer for me? Thank you, Evan. 360 divided by 10 is 36. Now all we have to do is 36 divided by 6, and I will rely on my friend Tyler to tell us that 36 divided by 6, Tyler, is 6. Thanks, guys. This is this is kind of fun, huh? We're, we're uh, synthesizing our learning from 24. We are estimating and rounding, which I know everyone loves to do, and I mean, I'm having a great time. Well, let's look at one more. This one is a little goofy. So let's look at this one because I think it's interesting. So this is 7.15 divided by 31. Let's round 7.15 to 7. And let's go ahead. I'm going to say let's round it to 7 for now. Let's round 31 to 30. I think uh, Sienna was saying thinking the same thing there. And now we're going to go ahead and decompose 30 into two uh, other numbers. So uh, we're going to have a seven divided by 10. We're going to decompose 30 into 10 and three. So our expression here is seven divided by 10 divided by three. Okay, next line, let's do the work here. I'm going to think about Kylie. Kylie, can you think about what happens when we divide seven by 10? Um, I can kind of read Kylie's thoughts and she's thinking, well, Mrs. Calamair, seven is going to move to the right on the place value chart and it's only going to shift over one place value to the right. So seven is going to become 0.7 or 7 tenths. Beautiful, thank you, Kylie. And now let's rewrite our expression. And we have 0.7 divided by 3, which is not, I can't round, I can't divide 7 by 3 super easily in my head. So since we're using estimation, I'm going to go ahead and round 0.7 to 0.6. Why would I do that, Christopher? Well, Mrs. Calamaris, this is my Christopher voice. Well, Mrs. Calamaris, you would round 0.7 to 0.6 because 0.6 or 6 tenths is much more easily divisible by 3. And to that, Christopher, I thank you and agree, couldn't agree with you more. Um, Tracy, 6 tenths divided into 3 equal groups. How many tenths do we have in each group? Well, Tracy, thank you. Two. We have 2 tenths in each group. I rounded and then I rounded again and that's okay because we're estimating. Life is good. Um, I think we're just probably gonna wrap it up there. Uh, actually, no, I'm gonna, let's do one more word problem because this is so much fun. Let's look into number four here uh, with, we're going to learn about Xavier and his popcorn. Okay, so uh, let's read the problem. Xavier goes to the store with $40. Keep in mind, we are still in lesson 25, so we're still doing estimation. He spends $38.60 on 13 bags of popcorn. Um, I'm thinking, wow, Xavier really likes popcorn. That's just me. Um, okay, so popcorn enthusiast, cool. Now, what what do we need to know? How much does one bag of, I'm sorry, about how much does one bag of popcorn cost? So I love this word about because this is like the gray area, right? It's about, okay? So let's think about about how much does one bag of popcorn cost? So he spends thirty eight sixty on 13 bags of popcorn. I'm going to round 3860 to 39 and I'm going to round 13 to 10 because this is less than 25 and we're rounding and using estimation. From here all we have to do is divide 39 by 10. Yes, yes you can. Uh, when we divide 39 by 10, sorry guys, I'm making a math movie for my fifth graders. I'm not talking to myself, I promise.
<laughs> you know, we're our fourth grade neighbors coming coming through. Uh, when we divide 39 by 10, what happens in a situation like this? Uh, miles. Yes, Miles, 39 is going to move to the right one place value, and we are going to come up with 3.9. So our answer here, about how much does one bag of popcorn cost? Popcorn costs? Well, it costs about $3.90. Our next question says, does he have enough money for another bag? Use your estimate to explain your answer. So he has $40. He bought 13 bags of popcorn for $38.60. If each bag is about $3.90, can we squeeze another three dollars and ninety cents into? Um, I'm sorry, into. I should say out of forty. Let's think about that. So okay, so we spent thirty eight sixty. We rounded that to thirty nine. We'll say if we're just rounding, we'll say that we'll round three hundred three dollars and ninety cents. I did not mean to do that. We'll round that to four. 39 plus 4 is 43. He only has $40. So the answer is, nah. No, he can't, he can't afford another bag of popcorn. Um, which reminds me, the secret word is popcorn. Who loves popcorn? Raise your hand. Gabby loves popcorn. Nelson loves popcorn. Tanner loves popcorn. I love popcorn. Also, I love Fridays. Can't wait to celebrate this learning. Not that we're having a, a test or anything, but this is going to be a great lesson for a Friday. It's going to be a great day tomorrow. I will see you then. <laughs>